The most recent Lightroom updates not only let us create gorgeous HDR images, they also offer a simple way to share them on the web with anyone, even if they don't have an HDR monitor. Here's a web album I've already created in Lightroom, and as you can see, it's got a very nice grid layout. I can click on any image to view at large as an HDR, and even add custom text. All of this was created in just a couple of minutes, and let's jump into Lightroom and create one from scratch to see how it works. In this video, we'll be working with Lightroom Classic. You can do this in any of the other versions of Lightroom, but they are a little bit different, so be sure to check out the full written tutorial linked below if you're not using Lightroom Classic to understand how it differs for your version of Lightroom. To get started in Classic, go click on the cloud icon at the top right and make sure you're logged in and syncing your images. This is what's going to enable the overall feature set we need for this. And then beyond that, all we really need to do is create a collection. Collections will be the basis of sharing images on the web. So we'll go click on plus, create a new collection, give it a name that's meaningful because this is actually show on the web page. I'm going to call this my HDR gallery because my images all happen to be HDR. Not that you can't use this with any image in Lightroom, but it's very nice that you can use HDR. And then be sure to sync with Lightroom so that we're going to use the feature set. Click on create. We've got the new gallery created here and there's nothing in it just yet, but we can go and click to make it public up top to make it a visible album or right click on the album, go down to Lightroom links and choose make collection public. Either way, it's the same thing, just two different ways to get to it. There's a few more options here in this menu set, including the ability to go to the private version where you can edit a few custom features that aren't available right inside of Lightroom Classic itself. So we'll come back to this, but what I'd like to do is not click on this version here as much as this one because it'll show a little progress bar. It does take a minute or two for the web page to be set up for you, and this just lets you know that it's working. When it's ready, there'll be a link visible here we can copy or open. While we're waiting for this, let's go click and Go find some images to add. I'm going to shift click to select all 12 of these images, drag them into my gallery, and then these will now be uploaded as well. Typically when it's active, we'll see this little circular blue arrow here letting us know that it's doing some syncing. So the album is now public. I can see the URL here. These images aren't yet visible, but if we go and just click on this, we load the page and you can see it's empty because it hasn't finished syncing, but everything will be here in just a moment. And after reloading the page, we can see everything's now been uploaded and it's all sorted in the exact same order it was in Lightroom, which is something we can change in a moment. But let's just take a look at what's here. If we click on an image, we get to view at large and it'll be HDR in the large view. The grid itself is not HDR. Hopefully that'll come in the future, but for now you need to click an image to view it as HDR. And then when you're in here, you can go and like or comment on an image so your friends and family can you know, let you know what they think or make some kind of comment on what you share with them. There's also this little info area. And if we click on this, one thing to note is if you have an HDR image and it's being viewed on a browser and monitor that supports HDR, it will actually say HDR right here. So that's just a quick way to confirm that you are viewing HDR for a specific image. Let's close that. And I want to make a few customizations. I'd like to update this title to let people know that they need to view large to see HDR. And let's change the sort order to put the cityscape images separate from the rest of the landscape. So going back to Lightroom, I want to go and right click, change by renaming, and I'm going to make a little note here. I'm going to say view large for HDR. So this will get updated in a moment, and then the gallery will show that new name. And then for the images, I need to change my sort order over to custom. And now I can drag around my images into a different order, however I like it. And this will be the order that they will be viewed on the website as well. So just kind of pulling all these cityscape images out to the end here. So now I've got all my landscape first. I think that'll look great. This does take a second to synchronize changes like the name or the sort order. And you will oftentimes see syncing activity here, but not always. And then when you're ready, we can just go back to the website, reload. And we can see that the name has come through, but the sort order hasn't just yet. But if we just wait a moment and reload, we'll see that the sort order catches up as well. So really nice and easy to customize all this. And at this point, we've hit kind of the limits of what we can do directly within Lightroom Classic. To do some further editing here, we'll have to edit in the web version of this. And you can't get there directly from this, at least I don't think we can. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think there's a way to navigate from my own personal view of this. The public view of this would look the same other than this add photos button won't be showing. This is just 
my view because I have editor access to this page. So let's go back to classic. We want to right click it, go down to Lightroom links and go down to this private section for view on web. When we click on this, we'll be taken to a different web version, which is basically an editor view. And you can click on these images and actually edit them and do all sorts of stuff. You can't edit HDR just yet, but that's hopefully coming. But there's quite a bit of capability here for specific images. More importantly, we can change the overall look and layout of what's going on here. A couple of places to look. This little sharing icon at top right, if you click on this, you've got an ability to change who can view. I currently have it set to public, but we could do invite only and invite specific people over email. The settings section here, we can choose, for example, are people allowed to download the images? Do you want to show metadata, show the location, allow the comments and likes? So nice granular control here. As far as the images go, the version the public sees here will be up to 2048 pixels on the long edge. So if your images are bigger, they're not going to get something bigger than that. If you want to use something smaller, you can create a small version and share that in your collection as well. So just for those of you who are trying to control what people can actually download on the web, that's important to note how that works. And you can, of course, also copy your sharing code right from here if you like, or stop sharing entirely. Outside of that, Another place to look is this little palette icon. And when you click on this, you get advanced options for controlling the layout. So I can change my theme to different types of grid layouts here. I have a bigger image or very large images like this to choose how things look. And you notice that some of these seem to have some comments here as well that have been added. You can also change between a dark or a light theme. And I personally like kind of the default grid. I think it looks pretty nice. And you got, again, some more options here to choose how things get laid out. So really nice level of control here. Let's go minimize this. And then additionally, if I click on a specific image, let's say maybe I want to make my cover image be this one here. Oops, not that version. When I make it active, I can choose set as cover. And that's now the cover image for the album as kind of the default sharing view that someone would see. Also, if we hover between the images, you see this little plus? you can create a separation and I want to separate my landscape from my cityscape. So I'm going to go right here, click, and now my landscape are up above and my cityscape are down below. I can add text in between if I want, but I'm going to leave it as just a gap. So I'm going to say done. And so you can see how we get this nice layout to help separate things. You'll notice on my version of the page, there's some text before the images, and this is a bit of a hack. Within the editor here, you can add between images but not before the first image. So if you want to add text up above, just add some extra image as kind of a dummy image, and then use this to go and add that text and then delete the first image. It's a little hack you can use if you want to put that text before. At this point, I think everything looks good. So let's go check our gallery, just go reload it. And I think that looks nice, so I'm ready to share it. So I'm going to go back to classic, right click my link, copy to the clipboard, and I can now go send it to my friends. Now click on this next video to learn more about editing with HDR in Lightroom.